Hi there, it's Mr Hegarty here and this is a video for my Year 11 class. Uh, remember guys, we do these um, 12 questions uh, every lesson for a while now, so I just want to make a video to make sure you make a revision card of this to make sure you understand everything in here. So I'm going to go through this and fill it in on that A4 card I gave you so you understand everything of these 12 questions and we can start doing different starters next week. Okay. Let's do the standard form questions first. They ask you to write this number, which is 75 million, in standard form. Remember, the first non-zero digit is your key one, seven. And then, um, what you're interested in with standard form is how many digits after that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So therefore, the answer is going to be equal to 7.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of seven. Let's see how we got that. Well, this number's got to be between 1 and 10, okay? And this number is the number of digits after the first non-zero digit, so there are 7 digits. So it's 7.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. What about this one? Well, again, our key digit here is the 9, the first non-zero digit. And what we're going to do is we're going to, this time, because it's a small number, count how many digits before the 9. So this one's going to be equal to 9.1 multiplied by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it's a negative 5 because it's a small number. Okay, so very similar to the one above. When it's a small number, 0, 0.00, less than 1, you'll have a negative. When it's a positive big number, you'll have a positive. It's all about how many digits after that first non-zero or before that first non-zero, and then you make sure this number here is between 1 and 10, so you put the decimal point where appropriate. Okay, let's have a go at this one. So we're asked to evaluate and leave the answer in standard form the following. So what we do here is we multiply by the 3 by the 3, and we multiply the 10 to the power of 7 by 10 to the power of 3. So we get the answer, 3 multiplied by 3 is 9, 10 to the power of 7 multiplied by 10 to the power of uh, 3 is 10 to the power of 7 plus 3, which is 10. Okay, let's have a go at this one. It's a divide this time. So what we do, we just be careful to spot the divide. We do 7 divided by 2. And then what we're going to do is 10 to the power of 7 divided by 10 to the power of 5. And write our answer in standard form. So 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. 10 to the power of 7 divided by 10 to the power of 2 is 10 to the power of 5. And to write it in standard form, it must be multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. And these two numbers are between 1 and 10, so we're absolutely fine. OK, let's have a go at the next one. Remember, guys, the next one, I know I said it's a, a, the, these ones are slightly trickier, but do your first uh, line of work in the exact same. Do 7 multiplied by 5 and do 10 to the power of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. So what we're going to get, firstly, is 7 multiplied by 5 is 35. 10 to the power of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 is 10 to the power of 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now, there's a problem here. This number is not between 1 and 10, so we must make it between 1 and 10. So we put the decimal between the 3 and the 5. We've reduced this answer by a power of 10. We've divided by 10. So to make the answer... Um, the same, we need to make this bigger by 10, so we have 10 to the power of 8. Now remember a little trick I taught you. Um, you're doing a multiply, um, and the number is bigger than um, uh, 10, so what you do is you make the number in between 1 and 10, and you increase the power. Because you've just done a multiply, you increase this power by 1. Okay, there's a little trick for you there. So when we're doing a divide and we get the same problem, we might think that we're going to decrease our power by 1. So let's have a go at this. Well, we do what we did before. We do 1 divided by 2. Now, 1 divided by 2, don't fall for making it 2 divided by 1 nice and easy. 1 divided by 2 is a half. So we have 0 0.5. And then we have multiplied by 10 to the power of 10 to the 8 divided by 10 to the 2 is 10 to the 8. Take away 2 which is 10 to the power of 6. Now this number, again, is not between uh, 1 and 10. So we're going to make it be a 5. We've increased by 10, so we're going to decrease this by power of 10, like that. The other way of thinking, you've just done a divide, 
the number's not right, you fix it and you reduce the power because divide generally, not always by any stretch, but generally reduces the answer of something. Okay, next one, circumference and area of a circle. And we talked about this. Remember we said that cherry pies are delicious. So cherry pies are delicious. Cherry pies are delicious. We state that here we've got D. So we're told that D is equal to 13. So the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by 13. And our calculator tells us that's 13 pi when we do that. So let's get the calculator. 13 multiplied by pi. And it says 13 pi. And then we press the SD button here to round it. So we write the full answer out. Remember to do that. But don't do your rounding. Write the full answer out. 40.840745. Now we want to round to three significant figures. Remember, significant figures are coming this way, coming from the left. There's the first one, the second one, the third one. Line after the third one. Because that's a four, this all stays the same. So the answer is 40.8. Don't forget your units, um, it's going to be equal to centimetres because we were, had the answer in centimetres. Okay, let's do area. Now remember we said cherry pies are delicious, we also said apple pies are too. Cherry pies are delicious, apple pies are too. Area equals pi r squared. Now we've got r is equal to 8 here, so for the area we do pi multiplied by 8 squared. And we just tap that into our calculator. So we do, here we do pi multiplied by 8 to the power of 2. And we get 64 pi. Area is 64 pi. And we press the SD button and write that out. 201.0619. So area equal 201.0619. Uh, 298. And it's at this point we do the rounding. Now we want to do to two significant figures, so there's the first, there's the second, there's our line. That one doesn't change this, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change it, and we're not going to change this, so we're going to keep the two and the zero, and everything up to this decimal point must be a zero then, so it's 200. And the answer is with um, metres here, so the area is going to be metres squared. Okay, last section of this homework. Um, it's about triangles and finding the missing lengths and the areas. So when you're given two sides and you're asked to work out the third and it's a right angle triangle, use Pythagoras. So these two are both Pythagoras. In this case, this side here, call it X, you're working out the shorter. And in this case here, you're working out the longer. And what we do, straight into Pythagoras, we'd straight away say that X is equal to the square root of this one squared, subtract this one squared because we're doing the shorter. So 17.3 squared, subtract 12.9 squared. Let me just do this one here while we're doing it. X here would be equal to, because we're doing the longer, we add. So it's the square root of 4.3 squared, add 3.5 squared. Careful with this one to always put the biggest number first when you're doing this, otherwise you'll get a maths error. So calculator out, press the square root button, 17.3 squared, take away 12.9 squared, press equals, get 11.527, so x is 11.527, um, 35876, we want to round it to 1dp, so there's the after the first decimal place, so we would write our answer then, because we've got a 2 here, this stays the same, so it's 11.5, and the unit is centimetres. Don't forget the unit. This one here, so calculator out, square root, 4.3 squared, add 3.5 squared, equals 5.5443, x equals 5.4, um, sorry, 5.5443, 6651, 6651. So let's do our rounding, this time to 2dp. There's the decimal point. 1, 2, line there. That 4 doesn't change this. So x is equal to 5.54. And the unit here is going to be equal to metres. OK, we're nearly at the end here. Um, find the area of this triangle. Well, if you've got the base and you've got the perpendicular height, the area of a triangle is base times perpendicular height divided by 2. 
So the area here is 6 multiplied by 10 divided by 2, and 6 multiplied by 10 is 60, divided by 2 is 30, and the unit, because its area, is millimetres squared. Simple. And lastly, this one here, we're working out the area of a triangle where we don't have the base or the perpendicular height. What we've got is we've got two sides and the angle between. And we can turn to the front of our formula booklet and it gives us this formula here. Half AB sine C, so half A times B times sine of the angle C. So this is telling us to work out this area, we just do a half multiplied by the two sides so 7 multiplied by 12, multiplied by the sine of the angle in between, it must be between these two, so sine 63, and that will give us our answer. So therefore we've got a half, like that, come out of that, multiplied by 7, multiplied by 12, multiplied by sine 63, and the answer is 37.4, so area equals 37.4. I didn't say a round in here, so round it as you see fit, round it to one DP, and tell the examiner you've rounded it to one decimal place. And that's it, Year 11. Hope you found that useful. I'll be checking those revision cards on Tuesday's lesson. Make sure they're done, make sure they're neat, make sure you look over it several times before the lesson and have learnt it and committed to memory. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend.